having done thin wall in the last video which is this one because the, the wall is a kind of thin alright now I mean in terms of thickness this is the thickness alright now we're gonna do thick wall this thickness is humongous alright so this is the thick wall how do you um, decide whether is it thin or thick it's just d diameter over t equals or larger than 10 alright now instead of taking a piece of this this stuff and then I, ex I extend it come like this alright I'll look into from here alright because I'm actually keen to actually look at this piece right now alright this is this is a better piece that I I, I feel that is, is better alright therefore I have this view over here alright if I will have to extend this thing it will be a cylinder alright but let's just look at that particular point where we look at this point right here alright this just that top that the side view I would say we will be talking about the radial stress now and we will be talking about the hoop stress alright as for the longitudinal stress if you were to still remember alright now the longitudinal stress is acting into the picture alright sigma zz okay but um can't visualize the sigma zz is actually over here it's going in into the picture right it's actually going there and then sigma theta theta your hoop stress will be over here if it's in terms of 3d and the radial stress is over at this surface right it's over at this surface which is going in the radial stress direction that is going towards the origin all right so if you were to just take a look sigma zz is actually this plane all right while the um the um the so called the sigma radio right the radio stress is this plane and then the sigma theta theta is the top one right it's ex exactly the same just that from the previous video we said that this is sigma zz this one is the hoop stress and then going downwards is the radio one it's just a different um, point of view it's just the same thing that we're talking about just uh, all the way back right but take note first, we will not analyze in terms of sigma zz now. We will analyze in terms of um, the radial stress and the hoop stress. All right, sigma zz still exists. We didn't say that it will not exist, but rather than we will take a look in terms of the radial stress and the hoop stress first in order to to understand certain stuff. All right, and this video will be a few part series because we're gonna derive all the equations for sigma rr, sigma zz, and sigma theta theta. Alright, so this is a, a, a huge stuff we're gonna do. So let's go. When we look at this view right here, alright, this green color one, alright, is being pulled by sigma RR, the radial stress. If you still remember radial stress, if you go into 3D now, radial stress is pulling into the midpoint of that particular cylinder. Alright, maybe the cylinder should be bigger a little bit. Alright, something like that. This dice over here, alright, this 3D cube. So the the sigma RR is actually going into this this midpoint, right? Stress RR, right? And your um, sigma theta theta is actually going over here, while the um, you have this three D plane, right? So over this plane, which is you cannot see one, is going towards um, the longitudinal sigma ZZ, right? This is what we have said, but I just want to keep repeating until you you fully understand. Alright, so we can actually analyze in terms of the 2D view as we say because we, we are looking, alright, that's the, the 3D part, we are looking towards the side. Alright, so when looking towards the side, we are looking at the front view sort of it. Alright, and therefore, in, in such a case that happens, then the stress RR, alright, the, the radial stress is going to pull this particular surface. Alright, it's going to act on this surface because force is equal to stress times the area. Alright, so the the area itself is this one okay in fact this one is not the area this one is just an arc length or an arc length and it's gonna multiply with I assume it's just a one um, maybe a, a constant one alright so that it will become a area alright you may wonder why do I why don't I might multiply with dz alright I also don't know actually we can multiply with dz alright we can multiply with dz so in other words the, the forces is actually sigma rr alright sigma rr 
multiply with arc length. My arc length is actually what? Arc length is actually the radius. Alright, the radius times the theta because we're gonna have this this arc length over here. Alright, so this multiply with um, r, the radius times the uh, the theta. Alright, this is the arc length and multiply with the z. Alright, so you will have a somewhat of a 3D form. Alright, if we go further more, it will become a cylinder if you still if you just check it out. Alright, I don't know, but you you should get what I mean. Alright. So we have a stress, we have an area, so multiplied together we have a force. And why are we doing this? We are still doing in terms of static. Alright? Static means that you just just put it there and let it go. Let it go. Anyway, so far we have the summation of force is equal to zero. We're trying to achieve this. Alright, this this piece over here. I'm just I'm just trying to rewrite this piece over here. Alright, at least you fully understand what I'm trying to do. Alright? So now since we have a force that is acting over this side, we have we might, we will have a force that is acting over this side, and this force is over here. All right, instead of sigma r r now, it's only sig it's sigma r plus a small changes of um sigma r because we have a certain increase in in this um radius right this this radius. So um this this is actually del r. Hey, sorry, is it? No. It's just a stress, sigma r r plus a little smaller stress. This whole thing is still in terms of stress because if you cancel out, it's just in terms of a stress. But just rewriting this in terms of this form, that's all. Okay? It's because this is somewhat the radius plus a certain um, delta r. Right? So the changes over this this thing has has a changes of a certain delta r um, distance due to the radius. Alright? So therefore I'll just write it here. Put it in other words, this small little um, radial stress R R is is moving somewhat uh, moving across this delta R, all right? This this partial R, and then because we want to um, equilibrize or or equalize this this stress because they are all in terms of a stress M P A or whatsoever, then you're gonna multiply you're gonna multiply with a delta R itself this this particular length, all right? have another like delta delta um maybe r naught all right if that's the case then i have plus sigma r r divided by r a partial r and then times delta r naught all right so if you have more then you're just, you're just gonna add on things like that so this is just the changes in the radius will cause the changes in the stress that's that's just the meaning all right just just take it over here we have our stress now Okay, what about the area? The area is the same thing. We take this arc length, alright, this arc length multiplied by dz, alright, because we are talking about dz now. Alright, a small a small changes of a uh, in the z direction. So this arc length itself is r plus delta r multiplied by theta. Previously for the green one, as you can see over here, is just the radius times the theta angle. Now, because of a cha small change of a delta r, so therefore um, we're gonna include this delta r also. All right. So after settling this this piece over here, the equilibrium forces acting on this side, I'm right, gonna pull pull it apart. Now we're gonna do about in terms of the hoop stress. All right. Just now is the radial stress. Now we're gonna talk about the hoop stress sigma theta theta. All right. So how do we do? We have a hoop stress that is acting on alongside these two parts, alright? This is the thing, it's acting two sides. So it's, the stresses is actually two times sigma theta theta. Okay? Now what about the um, the area, the area itself? We know that the radius sigma, I mean delta r is over here, right? With this, this, this line over here can be delta r, alright? And we can actually have an imaginary right, right triangle over here, alright? just that particular stuff all right because we are pulling at this direction we're actually are keen to actually look at this this particular line right we're actually looking keen to look at this particular line therefore if delta r is the hypotenuse all right and we are keen to actually look at the the um this this um because the angle is over here this is opposite this is adjacent and therefore we're actually keen to look at the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse which is equals to the cosine theta okay 
But the cosine theta part is a little more tricky because the angle over here is actually this angle. Right, this whole thing is theta. Okay? Now, that is the case, then this one over here is actually nine I mean theta divided by two. Alright, and this over here is also theta divided by two. Okay? Alright, something deep actually comes in. Alright, is that if you were to take a look just now in the in the green color and the purple color one, alright, our our arc length, alright, our area is actually um this arc length multiplied by the z. Alright, we're actually talking about a an a certain area that is over the side, or a certain area that is over the side. Alright, we're talking about only this particular area. So only about that that plane, alright, this this particular plane. Maybe if there's like a Y and Z, we're talking about this particular plane. <coughs> and therefore, in order to set up an um, equation for, for our blue color one, which is this one, we also have to set up a certain plane such that it is something like that. Alright? In other words, this, if you still, if you take a look, this is the green color one. Alright, and this is the purple color one. Alright, if I have a a, sh a a stress that is acting all over the side, this is the hook stress. Alright, this stress must be somewhat also associated with somewhat this plane. Alright, so it must somewhat deal with this plane over here. Alright, so we talk about the same plane. Alright, so it's an equilibrium force at the same particular plane, I would say. Alright. Which is very deep, and I may be wrong still over here. But what I just want to convey is that, um, because of this, or uh, because of this, maybe not. All right, I don't know. Just leave it to for you to think. But this is another way to explain. All right, this the other way to explain is that over here. All right, this this line. All right, is is your sigma is your delta r. All right, this delta r is your hypotenuse now. All right, this is the uh, the theta. Alright, this theta over 2, theta over 2, because this will reflect this same angle, alright, because draw a line, theta divided by 2 is the same as this one, okay? So this is theta divided by 2, and then this is the 90 degrees, alright? So we actually keen to find this one, this angle, so 90 minus theta divided by 2 is this particular angle, alright? And therefore, this is the adjacent, this is the oh, oppo opposite di direction now. And so therefore, we are talking about this particular plane still. Alright, same as the other stuff that is talking about the plane, and this plane also. So we are all talking about the same same stuff, alright, same talking about the same plane. And therefore, in we know that this is hypotenuse, this is the um, so-called adjacent, this is opposite. So therefore, can write a h cosine. Alright, this angle it's ninety minus theta over two. Okay, and then this will become we are looking at this particular line right now. Alright, if I were to times the dz, alright, this dz, then this will this will be our area. Okay, so this is something for you to to understand. I also don't know what's the meaning behind that. Therefore, to the best of my knowledge, this is the understanding for the um, the area itself. So these are all the forces acting on the particular same um, plane, I would say. And therefore, let's continue first. So this stress, you know that there's two times sigma theta theta, because we have two hoop stress over here, right? This is one hoop stress and the other hoop stress over here, right? Then cosine ninety minus theta over two is simply the one that I just say earlier is over this line over here. This, this one multiplied by dz alright so therefore we have a uh, have multiply with dz and everything equals to um, equals to zero okay so this is the whole chunk of our stuff for for the summation of forces is equals to zero four sides alright and because it's in terms of dz alright we can cancel all the all the disease and therefore what we have is this this formula right here without the dz alright because we have cancelled off the dz so the dz is somewhat um, negligible now factor 
so this is why we have all this stuff you just take a look all right this this green color one is this one all right it's the um, the stress mul multiplied with its arc length this one is the blue color one which is what we have um, told you earlier just now all right this these are the ones all right these are the ones and then the purple color one is simply uh, the the larger arc length all right multiply by uh, yeah you know so these are the stuff now we you need to derive the equilibrium e equilibrium equation using this formula but I just want you to think on something because it's something that I actually forget to say all right is that positive is going in this direction negative is going in this direction all right so the purple color one is the positive one going in this direction therefore this is positive all right if this is the green color one that is pulling in this direction we are actually minus okay and then this stuff over here they're actually moving in the negative direction also all right so therefore or in other words if you are talking about just now the particular line that we have we have drawn for you this 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 adjacent one this adjacent one is is somewhat whole thing is actually moving over here i don't know but yeah anyway so this whole thing is actually negative also or negative forgot to say all right and this explains why um, they have the negative over here and uh, um, where and negative over here right, so negative I mean negative over here and negative over here okay now the particular equation is being translated over here and therefore let's just re de let's derive the equilibrium equation okay the first thing first is to understand that cosine 90 minus theta over 2 is actually sine theta over 2 okay it's actually in your book Alright, and I can also multiply in the theta into each of them. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do in my next step. From here, as you can see, I didn't change anything. I only changed this one to this one. Alright, and change this one to this one. And just a reminder is that I'm now deriving the equilibrium equation by right, using the summation of forces equals to zero. You sum all the forces, and then you deal with things purpose is still to derive sigma rr, sigma zz, and sigma theta theta uh, because it is very complicated, very complicated so we need to do the equilibrium equation first so later on you will know what I mean alright next I gonna we see that this thing plus this thing alright so this is somewhat of like this one multiply with both of them alright so I gonna do this to, to do it out alright so, so after the expansion of all this stuff over here what I will have is the four terms all right just rewriting okay the rest over here I didn't change so therefore I keep it you can just double check it's a I don't cheat your feeling type of thing in fact these are all not Sigma W all right it should be, it should be Sigma RR all right it's the radial stress radial stress okay yeah, I realize why is Sigma W all right this is the radial stress right Sigma RR go in this direction. Okay? Therefore let's sort things up, alright? If there is a because we know that comparatively, if you compare um so called comparatively, these two are actually very very small. Alright? I mean in other words delta R is already very small. Alright? Delta R times delta R, which is delta R squared, will be very, very small. Correct? So along if you were to compare this very very small to the other very small very small uh, still got any more? no more All right. so in this case this one is really comparatively to other terms alright compared to all these other terms in fact all these terms this is in fact very 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 super small okay and therefore we can actually cancel them away okay so when I cancel now we have a minus sigma rr r theta all right this is the the stress and this is the area right this is the uh, the, the green color one it talks about the stress the f all the forces acting on this particular um so called this this arc length or its area right so therefore this one this thing over here is equals to this thing after we expand right so we can also cancel them away and therefore we are left with three terms all right so I'll just just plug it in all right let's just plug it in hold on so I'll just bring in 
this turn over here I bring in this turn over here and this turn over here the rest is cancelled alright I mean yeah equals to zero alright now oh, they have common terms right delta r delta r and delta r so I cancel them all the way alright in order to make things more simple by cancelling I have this thing over here alright next I assume sine theta over 2 as equals to theta right small angle sine theta over 2 for example uh, is equals to sine uh, is equals to theta over 2 alright you can actually try so let's try a certain number imagine my theta is actually 0 0.05 alright and then I divide it by 2 alright because we are talking about um, theta over 2 so if theta is 0 0.05 alright we should somewhat get back 0 0.05 divided by 2 alright so we can try that out alright so let's let's continue so 0 0.05 divided by 2 bracket then I press equal I have 0 0.024 0 0.025 okay. so 0 0.025 is over here if I were to sub in this thing now 0 0.05 divided by 2 what do you have this is it then answer is also 0 0.025 therefore they are actually approximately the same so therefore this explains why a small level of theta can actually um, somewhat change it um, we can replace sine theta over 2 as theta over 2 okay so therefore I've changed all this stuff over here alright the rest I didn't change anything you just check check it out alright I didn't change your feeling now next and do some cancellation cancellation in terms of this one is 2 divided by 2 and this 2 over here alright I can also cancel away the theta right now theta is all the same now I cancel, I cancel. And therefore what I will left is I have this over here. Okay? So it normally we will write things in terms of divided by r. Alright? This thing also divided by r zero by divided by r is actually zero. But well, let's let's divide everything by r and let's see. Okay? Then we'll have the minus the sigma theta theta. Alright, plus sigma r r. The whole thing divided by r. Right, because they are they are actually divided by r, so their constants is actually one over r, right? Plus sigma um, partial sigma r r divided by partial r is equals to zero. All right, and therefore this is your equilibrium equation. Okay, if you you may wonder why is this the thing that I've been derived is equals to is not equals to this one. All right, and in fact this should be something like dr and the d should be, should be cancelled. Alright, so as you, as you, so therefore you can see, alright, it should be the same, alright, it's, it's this one, alright, it's over here, alright, while this one is over here, okay, but I don't know why they, they write it in terms of, of this form, alright, and the weird thing comes in when, when this, this whole chunk over here has totally no meaning, <laughs> and then, I don't know why, and yeah, you know, at least now, we have something um, fairly useful. Therefore, using this equilibrium equation, we will finally, in the next video, derive our all the stresses of sigma, theta, theta, zz, and r. And I'll see you there.